Alright, so today we're going to take a look at, uh, basically it's a new notation more than anything else, which is this idea of what we call a differential. Um, so just kind of remember that we've already talked about Leibniz and his notation for the derivative function, which is dy dx. And Leibniz's idea was, is that basically remember that we're taking the limit as um, h goes to zero, I'm going to change it to delta x uh, just to kind of use that notation here of your change in y f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x and that his idea was is that we were going to let this change in y over change in x become infinitesimally small, that we were going to let the change in x go to zero, and as the change in x goes to zero, then the change in y goes to zero. So they're both going towards zero, but possibly at different rates, and that we could use this limit to help us calculate how fast the instantaneous rate was. Uh, so his idea is that we are basically, when we are calculating this derivative, creating a ratio of infinitesimally small values and that what we can basically do and what we're going to do in this section is we're going to treat each of these as two separate quantities. The dy is going to be the differential in y and then the dx is going to be the differential in x. And so by treating these as separate quantities as opposed to just one notation, then what we're basically going to do is we can think of the differential in y as that can be calculated simply by taking the derivative at x and multiplying it by the differential in x. That, I mean, mathematically this absolutely makes sense to us. We basically just multiply both sides by this differential in x. Now, kind of what we want to use this for and why this is in the same section as the linearization is this idea that, remember, linearization is the idea of using the slope of the tangent line and the equation of the tangent line to estimate a function value. Uh, what we're doing now is kind of more looking at the change in x and the change in y. So if we take a look at our kind of our curve here that we have f of x, here's our center that we're using for the linearization, x equal to c, right? And from that center point, we are going to move over a certain change in x, which of course on this function moves up a certain change in y, and that gives us the actual function value right here. Uh, in terms of notation, this would be f of x plus delta x over here. And so the idea is, is that by moving over a certain amount on the x, then of course the curve is going to have a certain change in y based on delta x. And the idea is, instead of using the curve to predict, we're going to do what we did with linearization, which is we're going to predict this change in y by looking at the differential in y. Because the differential in y is going to be an estimate of what the actual change in y is. Now, of course, we're going to have the same rules that we did with linearization, which is if the function is concave down, of course, the differential in y is now going to be too large. And if the function is concave up, the differential in y would be too small. So there's going to be a certain error in your measurement that we're going to be looking at here. But the idea here with the differentials is that what we're doing is we can use the differential in y, which is nothing more than the rise in the slope for the derivative at a point, that we can use the differential in y. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that differential in y as an estimate for the actual change in y. And then we're going to use this formula for a differential. We can find it by taking the derivative at an x value times the differential in x. Right? Now the differential form is going to be fairly straightforward when we take a look at it. Uh, the differential form is simply basically taking our dy dx 
equal to f prime of x and instead of writing it in the derivative form what we're going to do is write it in its differential form which is dy the differential in y is always equal to the derivative at x multiplied by the differential in x and so this is our differential form uh, so the easy it's very straightforward uh, typically when you're looking at something like this this is a step that you can skip um, after we kind of do this first few examples but you're just going to take the derivative as normal we're taking the derivative y with respect to the input variable t which is going to give me 6t squared plus 10t minus 3 and then to write it in differential form all you have to do is simply move your dt over to the other side. Like I said, this couldn't be any easier when we're taking a look at what is the differential form. Now this form right here is going to be super important when we go into our chapter 5 which is going to be the topic of integration which is where we're going to be given the derivative of a function and knowing that the derivative times the differential in the input is going to give you the differential in the output that you can work backwards that you can basically calculate what happened or your change your net change by looking at the antiderivative which is going to be coming up all right again now I'm going to go straight to the differential form here you really don't need this intermediate step once you see what we're doing we're going to take the derivative of z we're going to be taking it with respect to x of course we have to use a product rule and a chain rule here so we would have our x cubed times the derivative of sine cosine of 3x times the derivative of the inside which I'm just going to write in front and then we do plus we would have our sine of 3x and then times our derivative of x cubed I'm going to write that in front 3x squared and then the only thing that you have to do to finish it out is put your parentheses and put your differential in your input variable over there so this is your differential form for b and then likewise the c right here we're going to do the same thing I'm looking for the derivative with, of m with respect to q so if you'd like to you can go ahead and put it in differential form to start with and then just fill in your derivative which your derivative of exponential is itself times the derivative of the inside for your chain rule which is going to give us 10q so differential form is fairly easy to look at um, so that's not something that's really that difficult what we do want to do is this idea of the application is that basically what we're going to do is we are going to approximate delta y the actual change in y by using the differential in y as an estimate just like when we were doing our linearization that what we were doing is we were using our we wanted to find the value of the function at a certain distance away and if we wanted to find the value of the function at that distance then what we would basically do is we would use the linearization in order to approximate that okay which is what we were doing in the earlier part of this section um, so it's just like a linear approximation so here's kind of uh, a more applicable area of where we're going to be using this so basically what we're looking at is this idea that you kind of have um, a variable x and we're going to kind of think of this x as a measured value of a variable and then as we all know that when we actually go to measure variables we're going to have some measurement error so x plus delta x is going to be uh, the exact value of the variable so we're going to be off by a little bit that when we take the actual exact value and then we measure it we're going to have some measurement error so delta x is going to be our measurement error okay and so the idea here is that your change in y which is found by doing your f of x plus delta x minus your f of x the actual change in y that 
instead of calc being able to calculate that directly, what we do is we approximate that. And we approximate that by taking a look at our dy, our differential in y, that this is approximately the same as delta y when your differential in x is small. Okay. Now the key here in a lot of these problems is if we come back up here to our picture is that we're always pretty much going to consider that delta x and our differential in x are always going to be the same. And so when you're in the problem and working with this, your differential in x and your delta x are going to be pretty much interchangeable. And what we want to do is then estimate delta y by taking a look at our differential in y as an estimate. All right, so let's look at an example um, six here where we're going to be using this. So the first thing is, is we kind of have a spherical bearing. So we have this three-dimensional little sphere, kind of like a marble shape that we're going to measure with a caliper, which is nothing more than a, a measurement device to measure the radius or measure the diameter of it. All right, and what we have here is we want it to be 2.3. Um, when we're making them, 2.3 inches for the radius, but we are going to allow a possible error of no greater than 0 0.0001 inches. Okay, and then the idea here is what we want to do is find the maximum possible error in the volume. So the maximum possible error in the volume, that is your change in V. That's what we're actually trying to find. And to find the change in V, we're going to estimate this change in V by looking at the differential in Y. And so that's where this application is going to be set up. So the first thing we do is we identify our kind of input variable and our output variable. Um, since our radius is what we're kind of having a possible error in our measurement, so the radius is going to be our input. And the volume that we're trying to find the error in the volume is going to be our output our y in the problem. So we're going to set this up by looking at a formula. It's kind of like related rates. You find a formula that relates your volume to your radius. And since this is a sphere, um, and like would you be given this, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So this is a formula relating our volume to our radius. Now, since we're talking about error, what we're going to do is we're going to find the relationship between the differentials. So the differential in the volume is going to be 4 pi r squared times your differential in your radius. And so our idea here is, is now that we found our differential formula, we are going to basically estimate our actual change in volume using this differential in volume. Now, using a formula that we just came up with, it's kind of like related rates. Now we're going to plug in everything we know and we're trying when our radius is 2.3, okay, and we're going to have a possible error of no greater than 0 0.001. So we're going to consider our delta x, which again we're going to have equal to our differential in x, is going to be our plus or minus 0 0.0001. Okay, so this is our win, and so we would have 4 pi times our radius, 2.3 squared, times my differential in x, which is going to be plus or minus 0 0.0001. Okay, and so basically typing this into our calculator, we're going to find that this differential in the volume is approximately 0 0.0066 or you could round it to 0 .007. Remember, we only have to be rounded or truncated to six decimal places. I'm just going to leave it right there. And our units, of course, would be inches cubed. So what we have basically determined is that the max, and of course this is plus or minus, that the maximum possible error in the volume, the max change in V, given this max change in your radius is going to be this plus or minus 0 0.0066 inches cubed. Now one of the things that we're basically looking at here then, so kind of the idea here is that 
when your radius is going to have a delta r which is in between negative 0 0.0001 to 0 0.0001 the volume the change in volume we have estimated it to be between plus or minus 0 0.0066 and 0 0.0066 now kind of thinking about that you know how big is that what's what's how is that relative to what the actual volume is and so we're going to introduce a couple of more um, kind of terminology here that we might use in this section they didn't ask me to do this in this problem but what we want to talk about is relative error what do they mean when they say calculate your relative error because knowing that my error is going to be this much I don't know how big that is relative to the actual volume that you're looking at. So your relative error is if you take your differential in V and we're going to take a look at that and divide by the actual volume. So for this problem, basically what we're looking at is we have our 4 pi r squared dr, which is our differential dV, and then we're going to divide that from the volume, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and that this is a formula that's going to give us our relative error for this spherical um, bearing that we're looking at. And doing some simplification and canceling, we're going to end up with 3 over r dr is going to be the relationship, the relative error for this problem by calculating your differential in volume over the actual volume. And so what we can do then is pretty much take our um, information that we have. I could just take the uh, dV that I found up there, 0.066, and then divide by, find the volume when the radius is 2.3, or we can simply plug in that our relative error when our radius is 2.3 inches and my dr, uh, which is delta r, is equal to 0 0.00 one all we have to do then is go dv over whoops over v is going to end up being 3 over the radius 2.3 times my differential in r 0 0.0001 and I guess technically we could do plus or minus since we had that earlier so let's go ahead and calculate that all right, and so we calculate that using our calculator to give us this value right here. So our relative error is 0 0.0001304, or as my calculator told me, 1.304 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, sometimes that doesn't actually give us uh, the whole picture. Maybe we want to turn that into a percent error. So our relative percent error can simply be found by taking our relative error and simply multiplying by 100 to turn that into our actual percentage. And so if I were to multiply this value times the 100, we would get a percent error of 0.013%, which means that, you know, that's a fairly small percent error that we're looking at. And so those are a couple of the things that they're going to ask you to do with this differential. It's this idea that we can, one, find the formula for the differentials, which is simply remembering that you're just going to take the derivative as normal and then move the differential in x over to this side. That, But the kind of application that we're going to be using these differentials for is that what we're going to do is we're going to estimate our actual change in our output by looking at our differential in y, that we're going to estimate the change in output by looking at the differential in y. And so this kind of gives us this idea of more of a manufacturing idea where we can have a certain measurement error and we want to see what happens to the volume given that we have a certain measurement error in the radius. Um, let's take a look at another example of this. This is, you don't have this on your paper, but go ahead and just, um, let's add another page and um, that way we can kind of do just another example. 
uh, just more of a generic function example. So if I have um, a function, we'll do something very simple, y equals x squared. And this is one of those things where they're just having you play around with the relationship between your actual change in y and your differential in y. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the differential in y when our x is 1 and our differential in x is going to be 0 0.01. Okay. So if they ask me to do that, and simply all they're asking you to do is to compute your differential. dy is 2x dx. And then we calculate the differential when we're going to let x equal to 1 and our differential in x be 0 0.01. Then we're going to get our differential in y is going to equal 2 times 1 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.02. The second thing that they're going to have you do, just kind of showing you where this is going to come up, is then they're going to say compare the differential in y to the actual change in y for this same x equal to 1. And notice now we're going to say delta x equal to 0.01. And because now notice that the differential in x and delta x are being the same. That, that's what we're doing for our comparison. We're going to move over the same amount and then see what the change in y is and compare that to the estimate that we're doing with the differential. All right, so for this, if I was actually calculating the change in y, the change in y, if you will recall, is f of x plus delta x minus f of x. So now we're going to actually calculate it, not estimate it. Remember, this is the estimate. This is the actual that I'm going to calculate so I can do a comparison. So calculating that for our problem, we would have f of 1.01 minus f of 1. And then using our function from above, y equals x squared, we would have 1.01 squared minus 1 squared which is going to give me 0.0201. Now, so of course you can see that the actual value of delta y is a little bit larger than the differential. The differential was an underestimate of that. And let's kind of think about why I got an underestimate. We have a function y equals x squared, which we all know is concave up. We're looking at x equal to 1. And if we take a look at the tangent line, obviously the tangent line, the linearization, the L of x is going to be an underestimate as I move out. If I compare two values, the value on the tangent line and the value over here, then obviously you are going to have an underestimate. And so the idea is, is if we simply move over 0.01, then this right here on the tangent line is going to be the dy, which we found, of 0.02. The actual value, the actual change in y, is going to be the 0.0201. It's going to be a little bit higher than what our estimate was because the curve was concave up. And so now what we want to do once we get this idea, could we figure out a relative error for this? Well, sure. Our relative error, okay, so let's come down here a little bit. We went down a little bit too far there. So part C, let's compute the relative error and our percent error in this problem. Okay, so now remember our relative error is going to be my differential in y over the actual value of y. Okay, so for our problem, our differential in y that we found was 0.02. Now I could do it by formula, but I'm going to go ahead and do that by putting our 0.02 in. And then I'm going to find the y value. Um, at x equal to 1, which is 1. So we got 0.02. And our percent error is going to be 0.02 times 100. Okay. 
sorry, calculator entry error, which gives us a 2% error. Okay, and so that's basically just kind of all there is to this, that we're going to basically be calculating our differential in Y and using that differential in Y as an estimate for our change in Y, the actual change in Y. And then we can calculate things like our relative error or our percent error to kind of see what the difference is with those. All right, and then just to finish out this set of notes, just to kind of again show you, you could have done this calculation of your relative error by using the formulas uh, as opposed to using the values. It kind of works out the same either way. The differential in y, 2x, differential in x, over y, which was x squared according to our formula, we simplify and then the relative error when x is 1 and the differential in x is 0.01, we would plug in 2 times 0.01 over 1, which gives us the 0.02, and then we could calculate our relative error. Um, and then maybe just to kind of do one more, let's talk about another caliper idea problem. We're going to do the spherical one just to kind of get one more example in uh, because to be honest, if you can do these examples, you'll be fine in this section. So we have the same idea. We have a sphere that we're going to measure. Um, our radius is going to be a target. We want to get 0 0.7. Oops. I started to say 0 0.7, and I started to write 0 0.07. So 0 0.7. Um, let's say we're doing inches here. So that's our target measurement of our spherical object. And we're gonna, we want to be within 0.01 inches. Okay? And so the idea is that when you read a problem like this, that this is talking about our differential in our radius, also our change in our radius. So that's going to be our within. That's our measurement error that we're looking at. All right, and then again, we want to determine the maximum error in the volume. All right, so find the, uh, your book calls this the propagation error in volume, which is what is the error in volume based on the fact that you had an error in the radius. So again, very similar to what we did before. We know our relationship between volume and radius is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the differential in the volume is related to the differential in the radius by doing 4 pi r squared, differential in r. We can then calculate the actual change in volume using the differential in volume, 4 pi, um, and we're doing this when r equals 0.7 and the differential in x is 0.01. So 4 pi times our 0 0.7 times our 0 0.7 squared times our differential in r. And again, you're thinking of this as plus or minus 0.01 because we can be above or below. And then using our calculator, we'll get plus or minus 0.06158 inches cubed. All right? So that basically is allowing us to find um, the estimate the change in volume by using the differential. We get this much right here. All right? And then we want to compare that to the actual volume. We want to compare this differential to the volume that's there and see kind of what our relative error is. So our relative error can be found, and again, I'm just going to use the formula that we came up before uh, after we had simplified, which was 3 over r dr. So the relative error when the radius is 0.7 and the differential in x or change in x is 0.01, we're going to get our relative error is 3 over 0.7 times our plus or minus 0.01, which is going to give us about plus or minus 0.0429, which then converts to a percent error 
of approximately 4.29 percent, simply multiplying that by 100. Um, so that way we can kind of put that in context. All right, so that should be enough examples uh, for the differential section of this, and so we'll end the video.